Good Wednesday to you. It is the 23rd day of January 2019. This is Wake Up on Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. Now renewing our FCC license on a weekly basis. I'm Dan Kuntz, your host. Good to have you on board on this Wednesday. Lots going on today. Congratulations, Edgar Martinez. He made it to the Baseball Hall of Fame on his 10th and final try on the Baseball Writers Association of America ballot. It's pretty happy uh, folks around here, a lot of Mariner fans. Uh, and we'll be talking baseball, by the way, in the second half of this program with my good friend Ed Nags, a longtime coach of Wenatchee High School and a longtime manager of the Wenatchee Apple Sox. I bumped into him last night at the uh, Wenatchee East Mile Wrestling Match over on the east side, and I said, you got to come on and do the show, man. I need some hot stove talk. I need some baseball talk in the, in the dreary month of January. And Ed said, I'll be here, so we'll talk baseball with Ed Nags coming up in the back half of the program, plus everything else you're used to, the news, the sports, the obscure holiday, birthdays, today in history, and everyone is entitled to Mike Mignotti's opinion. But the first thing we got to do right out of the box is we have some school delays because of the snow that happened last night. There are a number of school districts all over North Central Washington. I'm going to be a little late today, and there you see it. We have a couple more to add to this from the time that we actually made that until uh, now. As you can see, uh, Wenatchee, Moses Lake, Quincy, Freda, uh, because of icy roads, they're going to be running two hours late. Uh, also now, we, to add to that list, even though you don't see it up on your screen, the Orondo School District, the Lake Chelan School District, and the Manson School District are all reporting two-hour delays this morning because the roads are a little slip in some places. Here on the valley floor, it's actually not bad at all. Roads are okay, but it's in those areas where some of the buses have to go that are somewhat remote, and that could be a little dicey, so they went ahead and did that. So there you go. There's your list. Wenatchee, Moses Lake, Quincy, and Freda. In addition to that, the Lake Chelan, Manson, and Arondo school districts, all of them are running two hours late because of icy conditions. But we're in for a really nice stretch of weather. What happened? We were supposed to have that wind last night into today. It didn't happen. What happened is uh, the, the, the system came in, but there's a high-pressure ridge that built up very, very quickly and very strongly. Uh, they knew it was going to come. They just didn't know it was going to build that fast and that large. And it was able to kind of knock that storm system out of alignment, which is why we, we had a little bit of wind. And we still have a little bit of wind right now in downtown Wenatchee. Uh, let me check here. Well, actually, we don't. Uh, but uh, So that's what happened. It kind of petered out. And so we had that uh, high wind warning yesterday morning. They let it. They just canceled it and said, that's actually not going to happen. And it didn't happen instead. We had some snow. In fact, uh, it snowed a little bit, um, oh, gee, about uh, 9. Well, it started snowing lightly about 6.30 last night. And there was a time right around 11 o'clock, it was coming down pretty good. And then it kind of stopped. We're at 30 degrees in downtown Wenatchee. We're in for quite a bit of sunshine for a long period of time, including, I might add, uh, after we get some morning low clouds and morning fog, it burns off, and then we'll have sunshine. That's going to be the pattern here. For the next few days, we'll get to that forecast in just a little bit. But again, school delays, one more time. Wenatchee, Moses Lake, Quincy, Afreda, Manson, Lake Chelan, and Arundel School Districts are all running two hours late on this Wednesday. If you're ready and I'm ready, let's see what's going on around North Central Washington with our Valley View cameras. And we'll start out with the camera on the top of the Cascadian Hotel. You can see the fog and the clouds. It's actually not that bad. And again, all the main streets and near as I can tell, at least in the Wenatchee Valley, are looking pretty good. They were able to lay the brine down, which means the, the, the snow didn't really stick to the roadway. And you do that with a combination of the cars going over it, and eh, no real problems at all. So there you go. That's a beautiful view of downtown Wenatchee looking to the north. Wenatchee Avenue on your right, Mission on your left. Let's go to camera two. Megan, who is in charge, says we're going to do another look at Arondel Rock, the Arondel Rock camera. That looks like it's jittering just a little bit because of a little bit of the breeze. Turtle Walk, of course, dominating your view there. You can see the very tip, the very edge of uh, Rocky Reach Dam there. Uh, you can't see the Wenatchee Valley. Turtle Rock is obscuring it. And you can see the low clouds and the fog. And, but it will burn off, and we'll see sunshine today. Uh, temperatures, by the way, are going to be in the lower 40s with dry conditions starting today. Where are we going for camera three, Megan? <clears throat> We're going to go see Kashmir again. There you go, Kashmir. Thanks for joining us. Good, beautiful view of the beautiful hamlet of Kashmir. We were predicting quite a bit of snow melt yesterday because the winds were supposed to come and it just didn't happen. So it looks about the same amount of snow that was on the ground that came down last night. I don't really know how much snow Kashmir got last night. We don't even know how much snow we got. I don't think it was enough to actually measure. Camera four. 
Let's see what's happening at that's is that Blag? That's Blag Hill. That's up. Uh, that's above Peshaston, looking down in the uh, Leavenworth area. They're very high up in elevation. Again, all of these SkyFi cameras, in order for the the system to work properly, they got to be pretty high up in the air, so you can point your dish on the roof of your house and get a SkyFi uh, right back to you, and you can get screaming fast internet to your home, your cabin, wherever you may be, as long as you have electricity and you can see any of our 60 or 70 some odd cameras all over North Central Washington, or dishes, I should say, all over North Central Washington and the Columbia Basin. You can get super fast internet. You don't need fiber. Call local tell 888-8888. So that's our tour around the valley from the National Weather Service. Let's transition to that all important weather forecast. The things are gonna be very quiet, very benign, uh, high pressure ridge is building up. It's going to build very quickly and continue to strengthen. So look at that. Again, we'll get a deal with fog and low clouds each and every morning. It burns off right around 9 or 10 as the sun gets going. And then we get sunshine. So 43 today. <clears throat> very little wind, by the way. Patchy fog reforms tonight. 31 for the overnight low. Again, a little foggy uh, Thursday morning. Then sunshine in the afternoon. And this pattern continues. 41, 42, 40, 43. A little cooler uh, on Monday and Tuesday of next week. Again, morning clouds and fog, mid to late morning, it burns off in the afternoon. We get lots of sunshine, so any snow that's hanging around is gonna be going away. This high pressure ridge is a big one. <clears throat> now, high pressure can do two things this time of the year. It can trap the clouds and the fog, and we get that inversion, and we don't get the sunshine, or if it's already clear when the high pressure ridge begins to strengthen and really make itself felt, then we get what we get, sunshine. And I, I, I'll take sunshine any day of the week. That's your forecast from the National Weather Service. At uh, seven minutes after the hour, let's take you up to the major mountain passes where things are looking pretty good. Let's take a live shot right now of I-90. That's Snoqualmie Pass. No advisories, no restrictions. They had a lot of rain uh, over the last 12 hours, and that means standing water. That's the really only thing you need to worry about. Roadway is bare and wet. You'll find some gloppy slush in places, but the, the big story right now is the standing water. No hydroplaning, that's not good. But uh, I-90, no advisories, no restrictions. Stevens does have a traction tire advisory. It is raining at the summit of Stevens Pass. As you can see there, it's very wet. Uh, some snow and slush and ice on the roadway in places. And again, this is pretty much really at the very top of the pass, the last four or five miles in either direction as you reach the summit is when you're gonna find that snow and slush. Once you get below that area, you're good to go. But there's still a traction tire advisory anyway. Blue Pass also has a traction tire advisory. Nothing coming out of the sky, uh, but there is some snow and slush and ice on the roadway. And so they do have a traction tire advisory. No real s snow expected today. It's gonna to be a little windy on the major mountain passes as that last little system exits the area. Uh, but as far as a daytime snow accumulation, an inch, that's about it. And then that's it, they're gonna be dry uh, with some clouds, a mixture of clouds and sun. Temperatures will be in the mid-30s all the way through Tuesday of next week. So once you get through the middle of the day today and whatever snow they get comes and goes, and then the passes will be fine for uh, quite some time, the next uh, five, six, seven days. No snow in the major mountain passes in the forecast. We like that. Traction tires are advised on Blewett, advised on Stevens, no advisories, nor restrictions on I-90. It is nine minutes after they are. Going to take a one-minute break when we come back. The news. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley live this morning from Studio 42 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Live channel. My name is Lacey Haggerty and I'm a nurse midwife with Columbia Valley Community Health. I love all aspects of my job because it is a profession that's very committed to empowering women to make decisions in their health care that feel best for them. It's incredibly valuable to me as a midwife that I get to take care of women throughout their whole lifespan. I hope to see you at a future visit because I know you will love having midwifery care. Hi, I'm Kevin Prosser and this is my print shop, Color Effects in Cashmere. Color Effects offers screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing on t-shirts, jerseys, bags, banners, signs, and more. With 30 years experience, you won't be disappointed with the quality and quick turnaround times you will get at more than a fair price. Please call Color FX.
Welcome back. It is 10 minutes after the hour here on this Wednesday, 30 degrees with some clouds and some fog. The clouds and the fog will burn off by the middle of the morning. Sunshine in the afternoon. Highs will be in the lower 40s, and that's the forecast through Tuesday of next week. Enjoy the sunshine. Here's what's making headlines on this Wednesday. East Wenatchee Police Chief Randy Harrison on the hot seat after receiving a vote of no confidence from officers in the department. Officers presented their grievances via their Teamster Union representative to the East Wenatchee City Council at last night's meeting. In the letter, they say, and I'm quoting now, they have lost all trust, faith, and confidence in Chief Harrison and Assistant Chief Coble's ability to lead this department. Chief Harrison and Assistant Chief Coble have fostered an atmosphere of hostility, retaliation, and unethical behavior. Their lack of leadership, mismanagement, and poor policy decisions have damaged the relationship amongst the officers. Randy Harrison has been the chief of the East Wenatchee Police Department for over 20 years. He was an unsuccessful candidate in 2016 for the Chelan County Commissioner's seat. He announced at that time that he would be retiring and then after he lost that election he changed his mind and has been the police chief since then. We'll have more on this story by the way on the evening news tonight at 5 o'clock. An 18 year old Wenatchee High School student has been arrested on cyber stalking charges after allegedly harassing other students on Twitter. Everett S. Anderson is accused of using the Twitter account at Wenatchee E or Wenatchee Exposed to taunt students. That included making fun of a boy who had committed suicide, saying he would not be allowed into heaven but sent into hell. In addition, a video was posted on Twitter about a pair of Wenatchee High School siblings implying they were in a sexual relationship. The video claimed that one of the siblings had raped the other. The mother of those students reported the video to Twitter who refused to take it down. Wenatchee Police Department Captain Edgar Reinfeld says law enforcement began investigating this case back in November. So the report came from a parent, uh, a parent of the two siblings in the first video mentioned, uh, called concerned and initially felt like kind of was nothing was really being done about it. These are difficult cases at best. As noted in our press release, there's no actual identifying information used to create the account except for an email address. Uh, we can note that email addresses rarely take anything to actually establish those either. And so we have these often dead ends in these cases. In this case, as the patrol officer continued investigating, she found additional information, including a Snapchat account that was tied to this Twitter account and numerous other videos and photos and other things that were being used to roast the students at Wenatchee High School. And this roasting deal uh, is not... <laughs> It's not harmless. Uh, as we can see here, people are really upset by this and should have been. These terrible things being said about these students are being implied about these students that led to major concerns. And so officers continued working on this and served a search warrant on Twitter that was still unable to provide anything other than an email address and no name, but did have an IP address that was consistently used. An officer was able to then serve another search warrant for the IP address from the internet service provider, which determined it belonged to an address here in Wenatchee. And from there, we were able to identify the suspect working with the school resource officer and the school district obviously accessing whose address is this, what students are there, because it really appeared to be a student, and found indeed that it was Mr. Anderson who was arrested yesterday. Uh, we also conducted a physical a service search warrant on the physical residence to retrieve the computer and an iPod that were used to create and post the videos. I don't know if it's going to be that difficult to prosecute in this case. We have a solid track here of the IP address being used. We have at least a partial confession. We have all the things we need to prosecute this one. And this happens to be a misdemeanor. It's not a felony in this case, though it can be a felony. It just isn't here. The, uh, but the important thing in this is the lesson that parents need to be watching what their kids are doing online as much as possible and need to realize that so much of this stuff is done anonymously. Uh, the, the arrested person here, Anderson, was doing this with anonymity and of free will and was, uh, you know, it's commonly called trolling. It's, it's called a lot of things, but, you know, realistically, he's out there um, stirring up all this trouble online that's creating real world problems for the students who are being identified as being somehow terrible or committing terrible acts at school and are just miserable. And again, we see these cases, we hear over and over and over the school bullying issues leading to suicide or homicidal violence. And this is no different. You don't have to be in somebody's face 
shoving and calling them names, doing things physically to them, you can tear apart a life with your behavior online just as, as easily as you can in person. Wenatchee School District will be offering opportunities for stakeholders to provide input into the process of balancing the district's budget for the next school year. The Wenatchee School District faces an estimated $5.2 million budget deficit. Three public informational meetings will be held January 23rd, 24th, and 29th at Wenatchee High School. The meetings will include a presentation on factors impacting the budget, a Q&A time, and a link for an online survey. Public comment will not be taken at the meetings. The purpose of the online survey is to gather input from various stakeholder groups to identify district priorities that will be used to, to guide the budget adjustments for 2019-2020. The first informational meeting, January 23rd, it runs from 6.30 to 8 in the evening. Speaking of schools, voters in the Waterville School District will be deciding on two short-term levies next month, a one-year replacement educational and operations levy and a two-year capital levy. Waterville school officials say the new school funding formula adopted by the state legislature had unintended consequences, including a capped rate for school levies, which hurts small rural school districts. Now, because of the reduction in funds, the district this year cut two teaching positions and five non-teaching staff positions, reduced administrative staff by half a position, and did not fill the music instruction post. The two levies combined would cost property owners $2.50 for every $1,000 of assessed value, that's about $625 a year for the owner of a $250,000 home. Ballots will be mailed out this week, and the measure needs a simple majority to pass. Well, for the last four years, Wenatchee native Sherrit DeLong has driven the same mail delivery route on Highway 97, stopping at Chelan, Brewster, Malott, and Okanagan. DeLong is sharing the quiet and oftentimes lonely moments on the road as paintings that memorialize early morning scenes so beautiful he just couldn't resist but to paint them. His work is now hanging at Wenatchee Valley College Mac Gallery for February's first Friday. Um, I'm Sherrod DeLong. Um, I grew up here in Wenatchee. I have always been interested in the arts and always made art. My painting style, I'm really influenced by uh, a lot of the painters in America and Europe up through the turn of the century, up until perhaps like the 1930s. Um, I like their fascination with that question of beauty and finding beauty in, in the everyday. I got a job driving for the post office as a postal contract driver. It was always very, very early in the morning and often really beautiful. Uh, eventually, I just was driving only the Highway 97 route, and which I still think is a very beautiful drive, because I would always see the sun come up, and the rep the rep the repetition of the experience um, drew out a lot of my favorite places. I never had in mind that I was going to do a show. I was just painting these places uh, for for their own sake and kind of kind of honoring just the everyday things I would see in my own life. The weather and the light and it would all line up in this amazing way that would inspire me and bring me a sense of assurance and beauty and comfort um, on these lonely drives that um, you know, that were, and lonely is the best way I can describe them. There were these moments that I thought were inspiring and almost like gifts in themselves, and I would take photos, I would sketch them, I would, uh, and I never had a whole lot of time to do that because I was on a schedule to deliver the mail in bulk to these small towns. I was always on the road during the transition moments of night and day, mornings and evenings. All the elements that combine to make that moment aren't going to be the same again. And you do experience some level of regret for not pausing and appreciating it. I hope they experience some of, the, uh, some of that quiet beauty that I experience. Um, and 
I hope they can look at my work and have their own thoughts as they stare at the scenes the way I had my own thoughts when I was captured by these scenes to begin with. Most of these images are from the vantage point in the driving seat, in the driver's seat of a, a truck that's pretty high off the ground. I drove this route so many times. Um, the repetition itself, like in the recursive nature of it, is something that perhaps people not, might not be quite so aware of. A lot of the people that already live here can re-experience this area. We tend to take everything we're around every day for granted, and it's a completely natural process. <laughs> but there are many constant moments of beauty that occur in all of our everyday lives. And I've been very grateful for my job, and um, it's really put me through the experience of being a, a morning person. I never thought I would see so many sunrises. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. You gotta absolutely check that out. <clears throat> that was fascinating stuff. You hear that, Megan? He became a morning person. We're working on it. The news with Grant Olson comes your way at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. 5, 6, and 10. What happened that needs your attention on this Wednesday? We'll let you know with a nice little half hour program we like to call the news at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. Uh, Grant Olson in the anchor chair also handles the weather forecasting and Eric Grantstrom with Sports 5, 6, and 10 on television. Also available for you to peruse on our website at ncwlife.com. And you can also go to our Facebook page and we post a link to our newscast that takes you to the website and that will be available for you or late in the afternoon, right around 4.30 or 5 o'clock. You can check out the news on your tablet, your computer, your smartphone, or you can simply watch it on TV. And we have also archived previous newscasts for you to enjoy. At the bottom of the screen or any of the number of ways you can get a hold of us, you can go to our website and click on the Contact Us icon. Down the road you go. You can email us, news at ncwlife.com. It's down the road you go. Go to our Facebook page and message us, and it's down the road you go. Or you pick up the telephone and you give us a call at the number that you see on your screen. A friendly reminder, this is as much your station as it is ours. 22 minutes after the hour. Sports, very exciting wrestling match last night. In East Wenatchee, between the Wildcats and the Panthers, that'll be our lead sports story. Plus, Edgar is in the Hall of Fame. Sports is one minute away. You watch him wake up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Protect your family and save money with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to Guardian Services from Localtel. Call Guardian Security from Localtel now or visit localtel.net to learn more. Put winter weather in its place with a new Cub Cadet snow thrower from Rose Tractor. Hi, this is Corey. Let us help you get through the season with our line of Cub Cadet snow throwers. When it comes to snow, never let winter weather get in your way. The Cub Cadet X Series line of snow throwers offers three levels of snow clearing power and a host of award winning models. Get ahead of the snow. Let us help you get into the right snow thrower for the job. Rose Tractor, family owned and operated, located at the corner of 3rd and Rock Island Road in East Wenatchee. Welcome back. 31 degrees outside of our studios. Some overcast conditions. Uh, clouds and fog burn off. Uh, we'll top off in the lower 40s, and that's the forecast all the way through Tuesday of next week. Uh, clouds and fog in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon, and mild temperatures for this time of the year. Here's what's making news in sports this morning. Former Seattle Mariner Edgar Martinez elected into the Hall of Fame. Major League Baseball announced the 2019 induction class yesterday. Mariano Rivera, Roy Halladay, Edgar, and Mike you see now those coming up short include Roger Clemens, Kurt Schilling, and Barry Bonds. It was Edgar's final chance to get in, and boy, he deserved it, if only for this one famous at-bat back in October of 1995. I would love a base hit into the gap, and they could win it with junior speed, the stretch. And the 0-1 pitch on the way to Edgar Martinez. Swung on the line, down the left field line for a base hit. Here comes Joy. Here is Junior to third base. They're going to wave him in. 
in. The throw to the plate will be late. The Mariners are going to play for the American League Championship. I don't believe it. It just continues. My, oh, my. Edgar Martinez with a double. Ripped down the left field line, and they are going crazy at the kingdom. Yeah, probably the base hit that saved baseball in Seattle, really, if you think about it. Of course, I was a Yankee. I, I took it pretty hard back in 1995. I've since gotten over it because if it wasn't for that double, we probably wouldn't have the Mariners in Seattle. So I'm all for it. Congratulations, Edgar Martinez. By the way, we'll talk uh, Hall of Fame and all things baseball with my friend Ed Nags coming up in the second half of the program. Love talking baseball. With it. Well, the Cross River rivalry renewed at Eastmont High School last night. The Wildcats hosting the Wenatchee Panthers Big Nine Wrestling. Wenatchee trying to stop a string of three years of dominance by Eastmont. And it came down to the final few matches to determine the winner. We had it live right here on the NCW Life Channel. Eric Granstrom was Matt's side. Here you go. And now that's a pinning position for sure, and it is. One minute and 30 seconds into the second round. Ronan Haynes leading it 2 nothing, getting near fall points at a minute 10 left in the round, and he will get the pin 51 seconds into the first round. Five seconds, four seconds, three. Carranza shoots with one, and that will be the match. That will be the match. They will stay a two-point takedown right at the end, so 7-3 will be the final score. Weighs as much or more than you do, and you lift yourself up. You're lifting him up as well every time. And by the time to get to the third round, as it is a reversal and pin suddenly for Eli Olivares. Eli Olivares got to get turn points here and turns her over, but not enough to get a near fall. No, he's going to give her a two point near fall. Oh my gosh, I didn't think she had her over long enough. 4-3, the score with a minute three to go. Goodness. Everybody hollering for Chang just to stand up. Three seconds, two seconds. And that's going to be the match with Kelsey Ibarra narrowly defeating Cheyenne Chang. Chang looking for a pin. Reverses, got to watch his weight. Adjusts back. Tipping Cervantes back, and it'll be a pin 27 seconds into the first round. Skyleman dumps him over. Is it enough for a near fall? Six seconds left in the match. Was that enough to get points? No points yet for the, by the official. We have a two-point near fall. And a two-point reversal. We're tied at two. So now Skyleman will give up the takedown, and that will be the match, and it will go to Herman Jimenez. Kenzie again reaches around, and he's going to get some tip points here and maybe even a pin. He does with 2.5 seconds left in round number one. And he's going to reach up for the head, and look out, look out, the reversal, and 43 seconds left in the round. Looking for the pin is Diego Gonzalez for Wenatchee. Krawcheck trying to stay off of his back, and there's a pin. It was scary, when I, but I, I knew it was, like, people were telling me his head was too high, so that was the only way I saw it and I probably wouldn't have gone out. My teammates wouldn't yell that, yell that, yell that out. For, for those that have never wrestled, they haven't had the headset on before, how hard is it to hear guys hollering at you when you're out there wrestling like that? Um, I'm kind of deaf, but like hearing everyone just scream out like at the same time, go for the head, go for the head, and it kind of, um, it kind of get, made me under, understand. When Edgy wins it, the final was 39 to 24. Also last night, let's take a look at the Les Schwab Prep scoreboard. Cascade secured the regular season Caribou Trail League dual meet title with wins over Chelan and Okanagan. 
Kodiak's topping the Goats and the Bulldogs to win the school's first league title since 1987. Congratulations to the Kodiaks. Wenatchee officially capturing the Big Nine League Bowling title yesterday with a 4-0 win over West Valley. At East Mont Lanes, the Panthers outpacing the Rams 2,192 pins to 1,700, 500, I should say, and 75. That's nice. High scores for Wenatchee, Kayla Hankins, Jessica Holbrook, Hannah Johnson, good to see her bowling well, and Emily Groth. They both had 193s. Wenatchee will host the district championship. It begins Friday morning at 11 a.m. at East Mont Lanes. Speaking of East Mont, they traveled to Minda Lanes and picked up a 4-0 win over Davis. Wildcats outpinned the Pirates 2,021 to 1,701, led by a 202 from Samantha Hines. The defending state champions happy to have their alley mates, the Wenatchee team, with a chance to host districts on Friday. To the Les Schwab girls prep basketball scoreboard from last night. Cashmere clobbered Omac. It was uh, Chelan over Okanagan. Warden caught Cascade. Antiat remained atop the Central Washington 1B standings with a 60-8 win over Cascade Christian. Les Schwab prep boys basketball scoreboard. Cashmere dropped a game back of Okanagan for first place in the CTL with a road loss at Omac. 74-64. Meanwhile, Okanagan beat Chelan. So the Bulldogs uh, to the north are 9-1. The Bulldogs to the south are 8-2. Cascade dropped a non-league game to Warden, 60-38. Also last night, Annie had top Cascade Christian in boys basketball and Manson over Liberty Bell. And hey, don't forget the Wenatchee Wilds got hockey tonight. Their homestand continues. Merritt Centennials in town. Notice they dropped the puck earlier on these weeknight games, 6 o'clock tonight. It's dollar beer and hot dog night, $1 beer and $1 hot dogs through the first intermission. Uh, it's an hour early, don't forget, 6 o'clock. So there you go. Those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Wednesday, 32 minutes after the hour, the obscure holiday of the day today. You see John Hancock's signature, Jan, John Hancock's birthday is today. And today is National Handwriting Day which is really going out of style, isn't it? I mean, the art of handwriting is gradually being lost. More and more people simply type. They use their computers or their tablets or they're doing this with their thumbs. And so handwriting, which is as unique to you as a fingerprint, is gradually going away. In fact, a lot of police departments, larger ones, used to have handwriting experts to help with evidence. They don't really have those much anymore. Uh, it started to take a hit, handwriting, really in the 80s when... Uh, uh, typewriters and word processors became cheaper and more widely available, and I'm a complete victim of that. My cursive writing uh, back when I was a kid was impeccable. It was gorgeous, and then when I was 10 or 12 or something like that, my, my folks bought me a typewriter, and that was the end of my handwriting. Now I print everything. Whenever I write anything in hand, I print it, and I can't read it. So see if you can bring back the art of handwriting before it disappears altogether. I mean, come on. It's not that hard. National Handwriting Day, 33 minutes after the hour. Today in history, the deadliest earthquake of all time happened on this date uh, 463 years ago in the Shanxi province of China. Estimated death toll, 830,000 people died. The earthquake destroyed 540 square miles of real estate. It happened 463 years ago in China, January 23rd, 1556, the deadliest earthquake ever. That's a lot of people, 830,000 estimated. Nobody really knows for sure. Today is the 55th anniversary of the 24th Amendment to the Constitution. Say goodbye to the poll tax. Yep, the poll tax. They used to have a poll tax. It was in the South, not surprisingly. So, you know, they didn't want poor people to vote. Well, can't be having that. So what do we do? Oh, we'll tax them. You got to pay to vote. <clears throat> Well, they 86 that, thank goodness, on this date, January 23rd, 1964, the 24th Amendment uh, prohibiting the use of poll taxes in federal elections uh, went into effect on this date 55 years ago today. And January 23rd, 1986, 33 years ago today, the first class of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inducted into the Waldorf Astoria in New York City. Uh, Little Richard, Chuck Berry, James Brown, Ray Charles, Sam Cooke, Fats Domino, Phil and Don Everly, the Everly Brothers, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, Elvis Presley, and my favorite, Buddy Holly. Of the original uh, 10, only three are still alive. Little Richard, Don Everly, and Jerry Lee Lewis. And of course, three were inducted posthumously. Sam Cooke, Elvis Presley, and Buddy Holly, the first class inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame 33 years ago today. And finally, birthdays. One of my favorite justices of all time, Potter Stewart, was the 82nd Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court, best known for his famous opinion in, jo jo in Jacob Jacobellus versus Ohio involving uh, pornography when he said famously, I know it 
when I see it. He was a great jurist, Potter Stewart, born in the state in 1915. Uh, lost him in 1985 at the age of 70. We talked about how long it took for Edgar Martinez to make it into the, into the Pro Baseball Hall of Fame. Well, Jerry Kramer had to wait even longer, and there a lot of people just couldn't believe why Jerry Kramer wasn't in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He finally was inducted last year in the class of 2018. For years and years and years, he topped the list of greatest player not inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Well, he's in it now. Jerry Kramer is 82 years old today. 35 minutes after the hour, everyone's entitled to Mike McNaughty's opinion. Then when we come back, Ed Nags talking baseball with Ed. When we come back, you're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Hey everyone, did you know that the NCW Life Channel is North Central Washington's go-to source for news? No matter how you prefer to view your news, NCW Life has you covered. Watch the evening news weeknights on TV, stream it, read it at ncwlife.com, or catch the latest news by following us on Facebook. Stay informed with local news, sports, weather, and shows featuring local people and events. NCW Life, a reflection and a spotlight of the communities we call home. What's your auto mocha emergency? It's a Frappita Mocha with whip. The espresso shakes are my most favorite because I can get any flavor. Uh, peanut butter chocolate Frappita. Definitely the espresso shakes. My favorite is the Mocha Frappitas. A peach Red Bull. Grill, open seven days a week for lunch and dinner in downtown Wenatchee and now downtown Leavenworth, where eating out is eating healthy. Antique Mall at Cashmere wishes you a happy and prosperous new year. With 15,000 square feet to explore, Antique Mall at Cashmere has something for everyone. For repurposing projects, do-it-yourselfers and those with a keen eye for making something old, fresh and new again, this is the place to find your next project. Antique Mall at Cashmere, their friendly staff is here to help you. Stop on by today. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and Air, call Alpine Air. 662-6846. Since 1932, Camp Zuniga, nestled on the beautiful shores of Lake Wenatchee, has provided children grades 1 through 12 with the ideal location for kids to learn new skills, have fun, and make friends while creating memories that will last a lifetime. Camp Zuniga's rustic log cabins and their staff serve to provide each group a unique summer camp experience. Register for Camp Zuniga today, www.campfirencw.org. Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnotti, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. I've been reading a book by Roman Catholic theologian Richard Rohr. Now, I have to say, I do think a lot of Rohr's questions and the theological dilemmas he faces would be clear to him if he was married, had a wife, and had kids. Okay, now, no disrespect to the Roman Catholic Church, but both of the mysteries and meaning of life and questions and stuff like that, that they might have been made clear to me simply because I'm married and I have a family. Now, learning to live and get along with someone else, uh, particularly as someone who is as different and wonderful as Rosie is for me, has caused me to grow and change in ways I otherwise never would have. That's pretty simple, actually. If the Roman Catholic Church would just let their priests get married and have kids, they'd understand our life a whole lot better. I mean, just like you and me. Well, that is if you're not a Catholic priest anyway. <laughs> well, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnotti, and that's my opinion.
It's estimated that one third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. Hi, Justin here, owner of Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere. Club Crow is your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. We are your one-stop bar and grill, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Looking for a fun night out? Join us at Club Crow Saturday nights. We have live bands to rock the night away. Club Crow is bringing comedy to Cashmere. Check out our Facebook page for upcoming dates. Live jam session, first Sunday of every month. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. There's no substitute for the power of cable TV advertising. With Solion Cable TV Advertising, you can reach your target audience right here in North Central Washington. We understand their viewing habits and can precisely target your customers on great cable networks like these. Call Solion Broadcasting today and let us show you how to put your business message right in front of thousands of prospects at a very affordable price. Solion Broadcasting, 509-888-2020. I'm Jenny Rojanasatian, and this is Guada TV. Every week we will be bringing you a first look at North Central Washington business, tech, and education news. You'll hear from local influencers and innovators who live right here in the Valley. Together we'll discuss hot topics, current events, and resources that can support your business, our schools, and this community. Join me every week and let's get inspired. And we are back on Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Every time I'm out and about, usually it's a sporting event. I bump into Ed Nags. Ed, you got to do the show. Ed, you got to do the show. Ed, you got to do the show. Happened again last night at the East Mile Wenatchee wrestling match. And the funny thing is, we have sports fans on our staff here. Eric Grandstrom, of course, our sports director, is a huge sports fan across the board. He loves them all. Grant is a sports guy. Uh, Steve loves sports. Cal likes sports. Uh, I'm a baseball guy. And even though we have sports fans, I think I'm by far the biggest baseball fan in the building. I don't have anybody to talk baseball with, but I got Ed Nax to talk baseball with. My guest this morning, longtime Apple Sox head coach and at Wenatchee High School uh, head coach, uh, talking baseball with Ed Nags, local celebrity. Thanks for dropping by, my friend. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's good to see you. Right out of the box, Edgar's in the Hall of Fame. That's got to make you feel good. It'll be inducted in July. Yeah, that's neat for him and all the Mariner fans. Yeah. You know, I'm not a, I mean, I'm a huge baseball fan. I'm a Mariners fan, but I'm a L.A. born and raised kid, so I'm a Dodgers guy. If I had to, really, you know, I don't live and die with what they do all the time. But um, yeah, that's exciting, and the, the debate always of should a D.H. Mm -hmm. be in the Hall of Fame, um, and that's what these things are for. There's all kinds of debate who should be in, and mm -hmm. the steroid uh, era group, and but should a D.H. be in? And I I always felt because of the accomplishments that he had that he should be in. And mm -hmm. that's exciting for all the Mariners, he, his family, it'll be exciting in July when uh, for the induction ceremony. And I, th I think that's what took him so long. It was his 10th and final year on the baseball writer's ballot. And if he didn't make it this year, he would have gone into the Veterans Committee and would have had to wait even longer. Uh, but the, the number one argument against Edgar is he only played two-fifths of the game, you know, essentially. He, he didn't have to he didn't have to catch or throw very much, and and all he had to do was hit and then go sit on the bench, and that's understandable. Uh, but he's the first real full-time DH. They had uh, Frank Thomas and Paul Molitor who played in the field until their fielding <laughs> skills eroded to the point where they they were doing their team more harm than good on the field, but they could still rake the ball, and they just moved him to DH, and that's really what the DH was for for a long time. Edgar was really is really now the first full-time DH. I mean he. I think 75% of the games that he played was as a designated hitter. Right, because he was a defensive player as well. I, mm -hmm. I mean, the award every year for the DH is named after the guys, so I think uh, the fact that he goes into the hall is pretty appropriate. Your opinions on the DH. I'm, I'm old school. I probably I'll just say this flat out. I think the nine people who play in the field are the nine people who should hit, but I know I'm in the minority. I accept the DH uh, across the board. It's been around since 1973. It's not going anywhere. Every baseball league across the board, from the littlest of little leagues to the American League, 
has the DH with the exception of the National League. They won't do it. Eventually they will. There's, they just can't. I mean, they're, they're cutting off their nose to spite their face. Your opinions on the DH. You like it? I do. I mean, I like the game of the National League as far as a coach and a manager because there's a lot more that you have to deal with and think about. And you get to, I mean, you're, uh, there's more to manage, uh, more going on. Certainly at every level from youth on through, it certainly puts another player in the game that way. But from the standpoint of uh, entertainment and runs being scored, I mean, I think it's imperative to, to have that. Do you think the National League will eventually get on board and, and just join it? I mean, I, I think it's inevitable. I mean, why? You know, I think they will. I mean, baseball is pretty traditionally doesn't change very much. Yeah. You know, and just the fact that we do have instant replay and how they might change that. I, you know, and who's to say that down the road will we? I mean, I can foresee that we umpiring will not be the same. I think we'll have of the technology taking care of balls and strikes. I really do, but I don't know if I'm excited to see that, but I think that human element of it will be gone at some point. Which, to me, stinks. Anytime they take the human element out of any sporting event, I don't like it. I, I Instant replay in football, I just, ugh, that just drives me nuts. But I, I, for some strange reason, I'm such a traditionalist, I agree with you. I think I can see a time and a point with technology that they'll have an electronic strike zone. It'll be the exact strike zone as defined in the rule book. And the umpire will still, still be a home plate umpire to call plays at the plate and things like that. These, somebody's still gotta be there. It's not like they won't show up. But um, they'll, he'll have like a little buzzer in his pocket and it'll just tell him that was a ball or a strike. I, I think that's probably happening, gonna happen. I think down the road, it wouldn't surprise me. I just, just because of where we've gone already with uh, instant replay, because of what's at stake. And I mean, you look at the, uh, the play in the NFL over the weekend with the uh, no call on the you know, mm -hmm. interference and how that, the effect it had. Um, so, but I, yeah, I'm fine with the way we're doing it and we can keep doing that as far as I'm concerned, but I think it will change. Your roots are in college baseball, aluminum bats, but you coached the Apple Sox for many, many years. Wood bat league, wood versus aluminum. Oh, uh, wood bat's way to go. It sounds yeah. awesome, as you know, and a traditionalist would like that. Uh, a hitter has to be better, more proficient to use a wood bat. It shows your hitting your flaws as a hitter more readily if you're not swinging the bat very well. You have to have a very you have to have a better swing to be good with a wood bat, and certainly all the professional teams enjoy watching. Um, amateurs, be that the college players especially, you know, swinging wood bats in the summer. You know, some leagues, certainly our community college league here in the Northwest uses wood bats. Mm -hmm. There are a few college division three leagues in the country that use wood bats, but virtually everyone else is still using aluminum. I think, you know, where's all the wood going to come from? And then the expense of wood bats and breaking all mm -hmm. those wood bats, how would that, I think that's why we'll keep seeing the uh, aluminum bats but yeah there's nothing like the sound of a wood bat oh i agree all coming off of that what do you tell your, your your college kids or anybody who's who's played little league all the way through they're now in college and they've never used a wood bat it's aluminum 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 hey if you're going to play in the west coast league you got to hit a wood bat so start hitting a wood bat did they, did they have a hard time making that adjustment from aluminum Not, to wood uh i would say fif 10 to 15 years ago more of an adjustment but so many uh, players are using wood bats now that didn't before. Uh, even younger kids are using them. We used to would use them in high school. We'd have our uh, hitters use them in the batting cages and things like that. But certainly in the games, use your aluminum bat because it does it uh, helps uh, develop better hitters uh, using a wood bat. So you know the, it takes a little while I think for the college players who aren't who are coming from aluminum but uh, they uh, spend a little bit of money breaking bats mm -hmm. and it gets pretty expensive for some of those guys till they go up to the, then they'll start using the composite wood bats that are out there that aren't gonna break virtually. And, uh, but there's an adjustment period. I think uh, a lot of the scouts will wait a certain amount of time to they start seeing some of the collegiate summer league games because they know there is that adjustment period. Right. A, from players all arriving from the world's college world series and things like that but also 
around the first of July is usually those players have started made their adjustments. You um you took over the Apple Sox. You coached them for a long, long time. Led them to many, many championships. Started a great winning tradition here. When you made your 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 recruiting pitch, so to speak, to the college players, the 18, 19, 20 year olds, to come up to Winnetachi, Washington, and play baseball for the Sox, what was your what was your pitch? How did you sell your product in Winnetachi to your prospective players? Well, to be honest, I never recruited a player, so to speak. Um, basically, you know, you have relationships with the college coaches from when I grew up and played and coaches that I had played for and that I've known over the years. But basically the recruiting was done, is done between uh, the coach of the summer team and the college coach. And then you, the college, and it depends, every coach is a little different. A lot of them will just orchestrate where their players are going and then they'll tell their players, this is where you're going this summer. Uh, and so my pitch was after the fact, when they already knew they were coming to Wenatchee and I already knew they were coming here, that I'd call each uh, player individually, just kind of welcome them to the Apple Sox family and let them know a little bit about Wenatchee. They had already heard from their teammate who was here the year before, and many sure. of them would be asking, uh, putting in dibs for certain host families. <laughs> <laughs> because the Apple Sox <clears throat> have some, you know, great sure. people that are hosting players for the summer. So <clears throat> they put in dibs for that, but uh, give them a little bit of information and uh, just say, hey, enjoy your, you know, have a great uh, college season. And we'll see you when that's over. And then they come up to Wenatchee and they fall in love with the place. The vast majority of them do. And then, as you said, they head back to home. And they say, you know, I had a great time in Wenatchee. It's a good place to play baseball. Is North Central Washington in and of itself a good baseball area? Between Little League and Babe Ruth and Legion and high school, are we are we okay? We just I think we are we are good. I, you know, I would maybe lean towards the Central Washington. I think the high school, you know, basketball is a is a long time been a, been an awful big deal in all the different schools and uh, teams that have done so well over the years. Um, but uh, certainly, the state of Washington is considered a real hotbed for talent really is, you know, just when you look at the major league clubs and um, athletes in the Northwest are considered, say in high school, just a, a step behind generally than say the Texas or the California or Florida kids only because those Texas, California and Florida kids a lot of times have been playing baseball, that's it. Yeah. One sport guy. And they can play year round. Playing year round. Yeah. They might be ahead of our high school athletes, but certainly once, I, I believe too, and you've seen it, and it's true that once our high, our high school athletes will go to, go to college and start, or professionally, and start just spending all their time on one sport, they really uh, make a jump and catch up and go past a lot In of In this guys. day and age, with, uh, we're bombarded with electronics and gadgets and a million things to do, and I got my PlayStation and my Xbox One, and, and uh, and how do you sell your product, baseball, as a sport to the seven, eight, nine-year-old that it's something that's boring? And I mean, it, are you concerned about baseball in that respect, the future of baseball, with all the things that are available for kids to do now that weren't when you and I were kids? We all play baseball. That's not the case anymore. Are you concerned about that? Is that is that on your radar? Yeah, I mean, for years, I think I think we lose a lot of kids right about the age of thirteen. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I think there's a lot of variables, whatever the piece of the pie, all, all the different reasons and those things certainly have changed. I, um, you know, kids are playing, a, I think, too much baseball early on. I mean, they're on, they have a little league team, but they're also on the AAU or the select team and that goes into all-stars and then that team is playing all summer and then, hey, we, I play fall ball. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's too much. I think there can't, you know, there's too many games being played, not enough practices. Uh, like that's part of it. The time they get to high school, it's like, oh man, I was pushed to do all that. You know, I'm done. They, hey, lacrosse, which is a, a newer sport. Not a lot of dads know much about lacrosse out here on the West Coast, so they're not coaching it maybe. I could see, you know, where that's, it's just more fun, free play. You know, my dad's not, you know, telling me everything and what I should do and I'm having fun. Uh, you see that just having fun. I think uh, we as parents can 
get in the way can get in the way and make it as you know, kids are playing little league and it can it can be a boring game you know I think parents can be bored watching little league baseball that can be a slow moving game not a lot of strikes thrown and things like that and and baseball is a, it's a tougher game to learn all the different things as opposed to maybe you know soccer I could go out and run and there's a lot to soccer and to play it at a high level you have to be very talented and, but I mean a lot we can all go out and run and kick a ball possibly as far as that young age group but baseball and running the bases and outs and tagging up and everything that goes on in baseball takes a while and certainly pitching and throwing strikes and can be boring to watch and I think we as parents and who are coaches and the winning side of it really gets in the way and uh, it's supposed to be fun it's a fun game to play I, I mean I you know and you read and talk to coaches at the highest level and I remember reading a lot of Vince Lombardi and I mean he felt you know it still needed to be fun and I Joe Madden with the Cubs who's a great manager and I mean it needs he always he does things it needs to be fun to come to the ballpark and I think that's huge I mean I I'm still so lucky to be able to do it in the summers and uh, very privileged to still be a part of the game and it is it's fun uh, it can be kind of work but I think to be good at there is that uh, there is that a component to it for sure but yeah making it fun for kids I think uh, that's not easily done you know and a lot of the youth coaches aren't that experienced and so I mean it's tough it is tough uh, again we're talking with uh, local celebrity Ed Nags here we got about uh, three minutes left. Edgar's in the Hall of Fame. Roy Halladay, Mark Bucina, Miriam Rivera. Growing up, who was your baseball hero? Who was, the, who was the guy that you would always watch on the NBC game of the week on Saturday? Somebody who wanted to end the Right. I mean, we only, yeah, we didn't get to watch a lot. Uh, so I grew up, you know, certainly baseball became a huge deal for me growing up in L.A. in the kind of later part of the 70s and the, the Do Dodgers and Reds, that rivalry. Huge, I mean, Dodger, I was a huge Dodger fan, but my favorite player was Pete Rose. Yeah. Uh, watching him play, I loved watching him play and how he played. And That's ironic because he was one of my favorite players growing up too, was Pete Rose. Just the way he approached the game and played the game. And, and he's not going to go into the Hall of Fame. That was a great rival, uh, rivalry, the Dodgers and the Reds. I think between the two of them, they won every National League West division in, in the 70s, didn't they? Between the two of them, pretty it's, much? Yeah, I don't know the history of it, but it, it <coughs> seemed like that. Those yeah. were always good battles and fun games to, as a high school kid, to drive down to Los Angeles and. Uh, Play, pay three dollars and sit in the outfield pavilion and, and watch that those kind of games all the time was pretty exciting stuff. In the two minutes we have left, sell your sport <clears throat> to you don't have to sell me. I love baseball. Sell your sport to the parents out there, yeah, watching on television to get their kids playing baseball and enjoying baseball and enjoying the camaraderie of uh, of playing the game. Sell your sport to the next generation of baseball players. Well, uh, well, I you know it's like anything. I think they just is to introduce it and there's a lot of ways there's I mean there's a big push of of introducing just facets of baseball and I forget the name of it right now the Major League Baseball USA Baseball is pushing throughout the country where it's just the game of baseball whether it's playing pepper or games of catch not where someone has to have 17 other buddies to play the game but just small bits and pieces of what baseball is of getting them playing the game uh, so I think that's a, a neat, uh, something that's new and coming up and going on throughout the country. Uh, I think, you know, getting them introduced to it and then just like anything, if you want someone to like it, I mean, they're going to like it or they're not, right. but again, trying the whole, I think they have making it fun and not worrying about, you know, when you get in the car, did you win or lose or, you know, yeah. and I still ask my daughter who's a junior in high school playing basketball now I you know ask her you know she had me yeah, was it fun you yeah. know that's my first question and mm -hmm. you know, then it, she always goes right to the winning and losing side of it so that's okay we talk about the game but we're making it fun making it fun baseball is fun that's why I like it so much <laughs> Ed it's good to see you nice to see you it's here in the studio you. nice to be in here yeah it's good, to, it. it's good to see you take care of yourself and I'll see you around because I you're always to, seem to be around an event, event uh, around soon absolutely no Everybody have a great Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.